yeah, 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 yeah. Good morning, family of fast. Matt Mossman, the Chief Endurance Officer over at Endure Elite. Have you ever wondered if running or lifting weights burns more carbs and or calories? That is the question we are going to answer today. Now, a lot of you are already saying, well, duh, Matt, steady state cardio burns a lot more calories and carbs than weightlifting. I would just say, hold on, hold on one second. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I would say science does not give a F what you think, but for the most part, you are right. But there's a lot of caveats and roundabout answers to this where that's not 100% percent true. Now, before we delve into this, we have to understand a few things about uh, physiology, energy systems, glucose, glycogen, acetyl-CoA. Oh man, it's getting hot in here with all this geek speak. So we got to understand the energy systems of the body first and which ones we're using during cardio and which ones we're using during weights, which we'll talk about. We're also going to address this and just get this out of the way. Like I love both running and weight training. So this is not going to be a biased video. You also got to understand we're talking just about during exercise. We're not talking about how many calories you're burning after exercise. Cause I'm probably going to get the argument that somebody's going to say, well, if you have more muscle mass, you're going to burn more calories throughout the day. Well, duh. I already know that. Thank you very much. We're just talking about during exercise. Uh, so in general, Again, the answer isn't as straightforward as you think, and there's a lot involved, and that's what we're going to kind of hit on today. So let's address how many calories or which activity burns more carbs, the running versus the weightlifting. And we can't just put it in that context, honestly. we got to kind of put a time frame to this. So we're going to do, do you burn more carbs during an hour of steady state cardio, like running or cycling, or an hour of strength training? So... Let's talk about how you burn carbs during cardio first. So with cardio like running, your body relies on two energy systems for the most part. It's going to rely on anaerobic glycolysis to some extent. It's also going to rely on the ATPP system to some extent. But for the majority of cardio, you're going to be relying on aerobic metabolism, which as the main fuel sources, it uses carbs, glucose slash glycogen, and free fatty acids. Now, the extent to which you use carbs or fat is really dependent on the intensity of the cardio that you're doing. So say, for example, if you're exercising below 70% of maximal heart rate, you're going to be burning about a 50-50 blend of carbs and free fatty acids. But as you go up in the intensity spectrum, your body's going to go on shift to using more carbs with aerobic metabolism. And eventually you may get into anaerobic glycolysis, which can only use carbs. So how many carbs are you going to use during, you know, let's just say a, a fairly moderate effort of, of steady state cardio? Well, considering that you're going to burn about a thousand calories during steady state cardio, that would equate to about 250 grams of carbs, glucose, slash glycogen. So that's just kind of putting a number on there. I mean, again, you could be burning more or less based on the intensity, but that kind of gives you a general idea. Now, let's move to weight training. Now, when you think about weight training, you know, you're usually performing a set that lasts no longer than a minute. And there's, there's some examples where there's variations for that, and you're resting in between sets. Now, with strength training, your body is basically using three different systems. Well, I would say two different systems. Regardless of the exercise performing, you're always using it through the three energy systems to some extent. Again, it's intensity, duration, dependent. But for the most part, during weightlifting, you're using the ATP PC system and anaerobic glycolysis. Now, the ATP PC system stands for adenosine triphosphate phosphocreatine system. And this can power exercise like really intense exercise, like, you know, sprinting for about six seconds because the phosphocreatine donates a phosphate group when the ATP breaks down and becomes ADP. The phosphate groups comes to the ATP, forms ATP, and you produce energy rapidly. After that, your body shifts to anaerobic glycolysis during weight training. Now, during anaerobic glycolysis, the only fuel source it can use is carbs, glucose slash glycogen. But 
you know, that's, that's good news for weightlifting. But again, how many of those carbs you use in glucose glycogen is a little bit different from steady state cardio because again, you are performing work and then you are resting, performing work and then you are resting. So you're not necessarily burning as many carbs during weight training than as compared to like the steady state cardio, not, not even close. Now there are exceptions to this rule. Like if you go and do like a hit type workout for an hour, which I don't even think you could do hit for an hour. That would be pretty intense. More accurately, let's just say if you do an hour worth of circuit training where you're lifting weights, you're not resting, you're going to the next station, you're lifting weights and you do that for an hour, then theoretically you could potentially burn as many carbs as steady state cardio. But for the most part, steady state cardio will always trump in the number of carbs, glucose slash glycogen you burn compared to strength training. Okay, now let's get on to the calorie question. And this one's gonna be fairly quick because we've already you know, kind of talked about this. With cardio in general, you're gonna be burning more calories regardless compared to the strength training. Again, unless you're doing like circuit training at a pretty intense level. So with the cardio, you can figure, like say for running, you're gonna be burning about 100 calories per mile. So over the course of hour, we'll put in that context again, you're burning about 1,000 calories. Now again, with weight training, you're gonna be doing intermittent efforts of, of work followed by rest. So you're not gonna be burning nearly as many calories. Also, the metabolic equivalent of uh, basically cardio versus strength training is pretty different in terms of, again, the amount of work you're putting in, how many calories you're burning, et cetera. Again, and, the, and how many calories you're burning is, is really intensity and duration dependent. So, you know, on a scale of things, you could be a little bit higher or lower than like the thousand calories per hour running compared to strength training, whether, you know, the effort is more intense or less intense. And the same goes with strength training. But in general, again, you're gonna be burning more calories with steady state cardio, like cycling and running, as compared to weight training. Now, why does this all matter? Like, I like strength training and running just the same, and maybe, you know, it really comes down to, like, if, you know, with the calories, if you're strength training, maybe you don't wanna burn as many calories because you're trying to put on muscle mass, you know, and then with the running, you know, maybe you're looking to get a little skinnier and a little faster. So different folks for different, Different strokes for different folks. That's what I was trying to say. So depending on what your goals are, you may focus more on the steady state cardio or you may focus more on the snake training. Snake training, good Lord, I need to go to sleep. The strength training. So I'm gonna end it while I'm ahead and I'm gonna say, again, both you know, steady state cardio and strength training are extremely beneficial. And even when you train together uh, with the strength training cardio called concurrent training, that's even more beneficial for endurance type athletes. So I'm done. If you want more videos, articles, etc., on endurance training, nutrition, and supplementation, head on over to the Endure Elite YouTube channel or head on over to the Endure Elite blog at www.endureelite.com. Get social with us on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, my endurance friends, stay fueled, stay focused, stay fast, and stay informed.